Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is the very eagerly awaited Easy Sork update to the Lost Depths DLC. This build originally, five or six years ago, was designed to be very, very simple to use for all players. And it really, really capitalized on heavy attacks and off-balance situations. Well, along the way, that has been altered, obviously. But now, with the Lost Depths DLC, this is back where it started. It is absolutely mental. And if you do want one of the easiest sorcerers to use in the world, you are in the right place. Stay tuned. It's all coming up. Just a brief moment to mention that this video is, of course, sponsored by Outplayed. This is a new app or recent app that is now being used by many, many people across the world for their gaming recordings. Now, not just to record and then edit and upload like you would normally do if you were a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer, or just in general using it as a hobby. But this is something that will capture your favorite moments automatically depending on the game. It will actually track what you're doing. So it will notice if you get headshots kills, wins, losses or deaths, and it will actually automatically capture those moments so you can save them in a folder for later. Upload it straight to YouTube, Twitter, Discord, including individual specific channels for your convenience. Get the app today with a link down below and start recording your clips. So what's changed with the Easy Sork? Well, of course, if you've been following for the last six years, you will know that this original build is now, and was then, one of the, if not the most popular sorcerer builds in the world. Whether you like it or hate it, it's a fact. But the original design for this was quite simple. Dot, dot, heavy, 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 take advantage of splash damage, do massive damage and area of effect from a very simple skill, i.e. the heavy attack. That, at that point in time, was an option. You could do light attack and skills, or you could just heavy attack while keeping your dots up. And either one of the two play styles would kind of level out to some extent. Over time, obviously, heavy attacks went down in damage. Light attacks went up, and of course, off balance had a cooldown or immunity phase. Also, the skills were stronger in certain situations, and we had to adapt to allow to still keep the same build design with the heavy attacks being the most useful part of the build alongside dots and bonuses. But at the same time, we had to match um, our previous damage output by adding some extra complications. So while it's an easy sort, we did have some other skills involved that you wouldn't normally think of using. Well, with this particular patch, damage overall went down and heavy attacks went up. Heavy attacks are now increased by max stats so weapon spell damage stamina magicka whichever you prefer to spec into also each individual weapon has its own type of uh damage bonuses and multipliers towards that heavy attacks do an extra 70 percent extra damage in off balance situations as they always did but empower no longer affects light attacks empower used to buff light attacks by 40 percent now it buffs heavy attacks by 80 percent so if you can get empower in your group or on your build you are going to hit really really hard with those heavies that now closes the gap if you want to light attack skill light attack skill you can if you want a heavy attack heavy attack heavy attack you also can so it's about ease of use design of the build and your preference of play well, Easy Sork always excelled in heavy attacks and splash damage. And over time, while the heavy attack and that went down, and we plugged it with the damage, with this update, we are back to basics. No more complex extra stuff, just dot, dot, heavies. That will make more sense when we get to the rotation, but I'm going to show you how this is set up in order to take advantage of that to its full potential. So, first of all, we're going to put on our buffs and bonuses. Resistance buff, spell power buff, potion. So... 36.3k max magicka, 27.5k max health, and 13k max stamina. Recovery is 978, 792, and 954. So our health recovery, stamina recovery, and mag recovery aren't too bad. But just bear in mind, we are not ever going to run out of resources. It's almost impossible for us to run out of juice. Now, weapon and spell damage obviously will be altered, as you can see, we're specting to spell damage and magicka over weapon damage and stamina, so our stats will scale off of that. But that will go up once we're in combat because buffs and bonuses will kick in from your group and, of course, from your glyphs on your weapons. So that will be much, much higher in a fight. Our crit is currently at 54.6, which will go up to about 60% depending on who's in your group or depending on the skills you use. And our resistances, as you can see here, are sitting on a whopping 22.9k and 19.3. We are tanky as hell. Decent amount of crit, decent amount of spell damage and nice flat stats and recovery throughout. 64 points into Magicka, and we are using flat food. I know that says 0, zero there, but it's it's bugged. It's, it's just over 5k health and just under 5k Magicka. We're using a Thief Mundus Stone, um, 
all the way through. Of course, if you're solo or if you're in arenas, if you don't have buffs and bonuses from your group, obviously in those situations, you might want to go with a lover. But for everyday use, go with a thief. Now we're going to go into skills. This is going to be very simple in comparison to stuff before. So, disclaimer. If you still want to use mines and you still like the previous version of the build and you still like the previous sets, don't change a bloody thing. You can still use it. However, this is very, very good and is slightly more powerful than the previous setup. So there are necessary changes. Bound Aegis. That's right. The pet's gone. Rip, titty bird. You are dead. Yes, it hits hard. Yes, you can use, obviously, the curse to make it hit harder. But on this build, it didn't outperform it. The pet, instead of Bound Aegis, actually only gave us occasionally 1k more or 1k less DPS, depending on how well you were at keeping up that buff and bonus, because you had to activate it. It's no longer required. If you want to take it for the free damage while you're doing nothing, sure. But if you want the resistances and the extra flat resources, this skill will give you an increased maximum magicka, by 8% and it will give you a resistance buff of 2974 just for sitting there. Now just bear in mind you do have defensive bonuses from this as well. If you activate it for the next 5 seconds anything you block will have extra block mitigation up to 40%. Also just for activating it you'll get minor protection for 20 seconds reducing the damage you take for 5%. That's a big game changer overall versus the previous setup. Double bar it. Just to keep things simple, you've got the bonuses for the Magicka and the resistances on both bars. And no matter what bar you're on, you can still activate your protection buff. This comes from the Dark, uh, not Dark Magic, Daedric Summoning skill line. Last ability you unlock starts off as Bound Armor, morph it to Bound Aegis or Aegis or however you want to pronounce it. Basically, don't touch it unless you want to use it to block Mitigate. Um, Barb Trap is next. It's in a Fighter's Guild skill line. This hasn't been on the build for a very, very long time. Trap Beast, morph it to Barb Trap, put it on the ground. Bleed will affect the target that it hits, and it will immobilize targets if they can be immobilized. The bleed lasts 20 seconds, and it has an initial hit as well, which does also bleed damage. Bleed isn't necessarily a dot, although this is a damage over time skill. The initial bleed damage and the dot itself, every tick, can apply the bleed status effect. So technically speaking, it's physical damage over time plus an initial physical hit, but every single tick or hit can apply hemorrhage to the target, which if it's a non-boss or non-elite type, will reduce their health by 10%. And while it's active, you get minor force increasing your crit damage by 10%. So it's a buff for you. Keep it up all the time. Always make sure at least one target is being affected by this, especially the boss, obviously, because it hits bloody hard. This is in the uh, level 8 area, I think, of the fighter skill, so it takes a while to get, but once you've got it, Barb Trap is what you want. Hurricane. Now, this is on the front bar. Previously, it was on the back. We've done this for reasons. Storm Calling, second ability to unlock, starts off as Lightning Form, morph it to Hurricane. Now, strictly speaking, Lightning Form does last longer. It lasts 30 seconds instead of 20, but it does Lightning Damage rather than Physical, and it does less. This one is aggressive. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and it costs Stamina. So this will free up our Magicka uh, bar if we need to spam damage shields or if we're in trouble or whatever, or we need to replace our dots or spam executes. We don't burn through our Magicka at all, and our heavy attacks are going to give us a lot back. It's almost impossible for us to run out of resources. But while this is active, over time it will grow and grow and grow and do more and more damage. So make sure it runs its full duration. Stay close to the enemy to make sure you get the most out of it. And at the same time, you have a movement speed increase of 15%, which is a minor bonus, which does stack with major. And you'll have physical and spell resistance of 5948. That's right, you're bringing your own major resistance buff here and your own minor resistance buff here, which do stack. You don't need any buffs and bonuses from combat prayer or warden resistance buffs or anything. You've got them both in your setup and you don't really have to do much to, to, to maintain it. This is free anyway, it just sits there on both bars. Now, Inner Light is also a very simple skill. You don't have to touch it. This sits on your bar, starts off as Mage Light in the Mage's Guild skill line. Morph it to Inner Light. Don't activate it ever because you don't need to. But while slotted, you get Major Savagery and Prophecy, increasing your weapon and spell crit. And of course, it increases your max magic by 5%. So 5% increase here, 8% increase here. This sits there, this sits there. You don't have to do anything with it. If you activate it, you'll find stealthed enemies. Well, that's pointless because we're not up against those. Yes, of course, there are major skill passives that can come with this. But again, we don't need to take advantage of one of the active ones because we've got it on the back bar anyway. We'll come to that in a moment. Major's Wrath, this is your Execute. This is also in Storm Calling. First ability to unlock starts off as Major's Fury. Morph it to Major's Wrath. This one does hit harder. The other one will give you resources back. 
Initially, it'll hit the target for X amount of damage, but if the target is below 20%, they will do splash damage and hit multiple targets at once. Also, if you apply this just before 20%, within that four second period, if they do dip, then it will pop then as well. So you can kind of preempt it. But basically, at execute, you need to be spamming this. Dawnbreaker is on the front bar for passives. We'll come to those in a moment. This is level 10 in the Fighter's Guild. In order to unlock it, starts off as Dawnbreaker, morph it to Flawless Dawnbreaker. Yes, you can apply it and do damage. Yes, you get 300 weapon and spell damage for the privilege. I wouldn't really use this unless you are trying to almost finish something off and you've not got much ultimate left. Or if it's a very, very short fight in general. If you've got ultimate enough to fire your back bar one, use that all the time. But if it's a fast execute or you're nearly there, fire this instead. But generally speaking, it's there for passives. This is double barred, so no need to change that. Now on the back bar. Unstable Wall of Elements has different names depending on which element you're using on your uh, staff. So this starts off as Wall of Elements, morph it to Unstable Wall of Elements. If you're using a Lightning Staff, which we are, then you will do Lightning Damage to the targets inside, but you have a chance, obviously, with Lightning Damage to cause concussion. Any enemy that is concussed from you or anyone else while standing inside of this wall will be caused to be affected with off balance. Now, off balance has seven seconds uptime, 15 seconds downtime. But during that uptime, you need to look for the blue debuff. It looks like someone's head with stars gone around it. That is off balance, or it will just pop up if you applied it. Heavy attack during that time. If you do, you will gain 70% increase to your heavy attacks. This has been on the build forever, and that's the whole point of it. Your glyph will also contribute to that quite a lot it will force off balance almost indefinitely but make sure you're heavy attacking during that phase obviously get your dots down but make sure that you're heavy attacking you'll get double resources back and 70 percent increase to your heavy it is essential now just bear in mind of course we've chosen to take the uh unstable wall which will explode at the end but you don't have to if you don't want to you can just have the longer duration now also bear in mind if you have someone in your group bringing off balance already if you can guarantee that somebody else can control it and you don't need to, then of course you can change this to a fire staff. If you do that, then the wall of elements will be fire instead of lightning. It will no longer provide off balance because somebody else is already doing it. And in that case, you will get more damage out of your wall of elements because if anything ends up on fire, i.e. burn and status effect, then of course that wall will do 20% more damage to those targets. So bring the lightning staff all the time unless someone else is supplying off balance in which case you can go flame and get a little bit more that's very very important to understand and also you need to be able to track when off balance is happening or fend that just heavy all the time it will happen now hardened war is on ward is on the back bar this was on the front previously for passives and bonuses and for convenience but since we've got so much resistances now it's quite safe for us to put it on the back bar for emergencies so it starts off as conjured ward morph it to hardened ward if you're in trouble apply this and it will protect your health bar for 15k damage once it's gone it's gone you can reapply it or if it doesn't get hit completely through the shield it will have some remaining for the next hit lasts for six seconds as long as it doesn't get stripped fail in that once it's gone reapply but this is for emergencies if you're in trouble or you want to protect yourself doing a big boom or whatever this is scaled off of your maximum magicka so the higher the magicka the stronger it is but it's capped at your max health so if you have really, really high health, you can get the most potential out of it, but you still got to have the magicka to buff it in the first place. Next up is Essential, possibly the most broken skill in the Sorcerer's Arsenal. This is in Stormcalling. Starts off as Surge, more for to Crit Surge. Activate this. You have Brutality and Sorcery. Major Brutality and Major Sorcery for 33 seconds. So you don't need a potion to buff that. You don't need spell pots. And while active... Every second, if you crit, you get 3.5k health back. This is bonkers and massive for your survival alongside your huge resistances. But just bear in mind, front bar, inner light, major prophecy. Back bar, major sorcery. You do not need spell pots whatsoever on this build. So that means you can use tripods all day long. You already have almost infinite resources because of the amount of heavy attacking you're doing. But now it's even better because you're using tripods, which also buffs your health recovery, gives you health back and give you stamina back. So in CC situations where you have to block or dodge or break a lot, you can maintain that stamina bar even though you don't have a physical weapon to heavy attack to get that stamina back. It's very, very, very efficient. Now, finally, before the ultimate is also at the major skill, by the way, 
much like in a light, but it's further down. You will need some lore books for this. This is Scolding Rune. Starts off as Fire Rune, morph it to Scolding. Place it on the ground, just like the mines we used to use, and this will pop underneath the target. Any targets caught inside that pop will all take damage, and every single one of them will take damage over time for the next 26 seconds. This is a very important skill, and it can, if you prefer, be replaced with uh, Lightning Flood. The only time you want to replace it with Lightning Flood is if Empower is already given to you by your group. If someone's using Gallonway, so you've got Empower on tap, if you've got a Necromancer making sure that they're very effective with that particular skill so they can bring in the Empower themselves, that's also awesome. There are lots of different ways to acquire it, but if you have Empower given to you, go Lightning Flood. If you do not have Empower given to you, it is essential that you use Scold and Rune. We'll come to that in the passes very shortly. The ultimate on the back bar, you've got two options. Shoot and Star for more damage output for you. You'll basically just apply this. It'll go boom. You'll get 12 ulti back for every single enemy you hit. It's the most broken ultimate in the frigging game. Use this all day long if you like. But if you want to bring something extra to the group rather than just do extra damage for yourself, then of course you want to bring Greater Storm Atronarch. This will summon an Atronarch into the room for 15 seconds. But if an ally takes a synergy from this, this got buffed. Nearby allies, up to six of them, will gain Major Berserk for eight seconds, increasing their damage done by 10%. So you now bring Major Berserk to the group, instead of for one player, for six. It's really, really helpful. So if you want to go for the burn, a dungeon or a trial, your nice, nice stack up, whatever, bring plenty of these Storm Atros with your group. They're really, really handy. Again, this is going to do less damage than Ice Comet or um, Shooting Star for you, but it is going to buff your group. Now... Obviously, uh, Shoot and Start is in the Major Skilled skill line. You need Major Skill 10 for this. But take this over Ice Comet. It's broken as hell. Now, passives. These are very, very important. So you are going to want to get all the Sorcerer passives if you can. Yes, of course, again, I did mention this earlier. You can still use Mines if you want to, but it's a different setup now. So you may not want to anymore, especially since Mines was changed. Mines used to drop on the ground and you could, you could actually make it so that two or three Mines could pop all at once on the same target. Technically speaking, you can still do that. The targets are not restricted to how many mines they can be hit by, but they are restricted to how often. So now it can be placed and every two seconds one can go off. So the same target can be hit three times over six seconds by the same cast. So it's actually quite efficient, but you can't spam it as much as you used to be able to because you'll only hit them with one. So the choice is yours. If you want to place it and just heavy, 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 place another one, heavy, 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 place another one. It'll, it will be effective. It will still work. You'll still pin stuff. It will still hurt. But it's not going to be as powerful as this new uh, alteration to the setup, which is actually going back to the original setup. Choice is yours. If you preference it, put it on. But if you don't, take the new setup. Anyway, passives. This reduces your health, magic, and stamina cost for all non-core combat abilities. When you hit someone with a dark magic applied ability, you heal. Bear in mind, mines used to do that. We're not using them. Crystal Frags was rubbish on this build. We're not using those. You may not need that passive. Unless, of course, you take advantage of Negate Bubble, which is a utility ultimate, but the largest or longest stun in the game. After block and attack, your next health, magic, or stamina cost is 15% less. So block something, cheaper skills. When you cast a Dark Magic ability, you grant Minor Prophecy to the group. You are not using any of these, so we do not actually bring that. Another Sorcerer will have to. But if you drop Negate Bubble, it can fire from that. Daedric Summoning, of course, we are taking advantage of these. Yes, of course, all this stuff was tested out. Um, you restore 300 magic or Stamina when one of your non-ultimate Daedric Summoning abilities ends. The resource return is dictated by the ability's cost. So if you do use Bound Armaments, or Bound Aegis even, once it's gone, you get some resources back. Uh, reduce the cost of Ultimates by 15%. That's all ultis, not just Sorcerer ones. Increases your health and stam recovery by 20% for having a Daedric Summoning ability slotted. We do on both bars. So we've got that there and it does stack with our tripod recovery bonuses. Increases your max health by 8% while having a Daedric Summoning ability active on yourself. That is why we have 27k health. We are not squashy. Also, just for argument's sake, if you want to see where that goes. Uh, if we have minor toughness in the group, our health goes up to 29.9k. And also, if a Warhorn in the group, we've got 39k Magicka as well. So really, really nice. Handy stuff. Uh, anyway, back to passives. Increases your Magicka recovery by 10%. Get that. Increases your physical and shock damage. We are doing shock damage. We are um, built for lightning. We are doing a lot of it, especially if you have Empower in your group already. You can take advantage of Liquid Lightning. But just bear in mind, we are mixing it up a little bit. But you still will want this. 
Increase your damage done against enemies by 1% for every 10% current health they have. So sorcerers are about burst. Their execute um, is powerful, but they have lower damage at low health. So you want to buff that with other bonuses, which are going to be part of our set. We'll explain that in a bit. But technically, when you start the fight, you do more. Every 10% will drop it by 1%. So 100%, you do 10% more damage. 90%, you'll do 9% more damage, and so on and so forth. We have altered that through our build to allow for execute power to be on par with the initial burst. But just bear in mind, again, sorcerers are up front quite heavy when they start the fight. Now, this increases your weapon and spell damage for each sorcerer ability slotted. Of course, we've got three on the front bar, three on the back bar. We are covered the same bonus on both bars. Now, this is very, very important. Pay very close attention to these passives. Try focus. Now, once upon a time, obviously, you used to do a heavy attack. It would um, make X amount of damage in splash, and they could crit, but they change it so they can't crit. Your single target can crit, but your splash cannot. Um, which meant while they did that, they didn't quite reflect the damage you did. What it used to do instead is it would count up how much damage you do to the target, even if you critted, but it would only splash with the flat that you did. So if you boosted it with Major Berserk or um, anything like that, of course, that's a flat increase. But minor, minor Force, Major Force, none of that counted. So if you did a 50k crit, you're probably hitting splash for about 25. Well, they've changed it. They've made it so that it now works properly. So if you heavy attack that target dummy over there, including crit bonuses and all that kind of stuff for 117k, all the enemies surrounding will also get hit for the same damage when it goes off. That's either per tick or per pop at the end. It's absolutely bonkers. The amount of damage this can pump out in area of effect just from a simple heavy attack. If you take advantage of your bonuses from your spell damage, your max magicka, your buffs and bonuses from your group, your off balance and your empower is nuts. They've made this very, very powerful. But again, the balance is there. If you light attack, skill, light attack, skill, light attack, skill, you'll get X amount of damage out for your build. But if you just focus on heavies and you build for that, then they can be very, very powerful on their own. Again, you will have to sacrifice because you'll have to make your sets allow for that play style. And we have, don't worry. But anyway, your heavy attacks now do properly splash damage with the amount of damage you've done, whether you crit or not. We do have extra penetration for Destra staff abilities that does include our lights and heavies. We do have enhanced chance to apply status effects while holding a Destro Staff. So if you are holding a Destro Staff on one bar and not on the other, if you're on the wrong bar, you won't get this bonus. Lucky for us, we're using two, so we get it all the time. And this is essential. Remember a moment ago I said if you heavy attack a target, the damage done will splash and hit surrounding targets. Well, this does also benefit that as well. Because while holding a Lightning Staff, all of your area of effect damage that you do is increased by 10%. That's air of effect damage over time, air of effect direct, any air of effect whatsoever is enhanced. The lightning staff heavy attack is a single target attack, but the splash is AoE. So if you hit that target dummy over there for a 100k heavy attack ticks or pop or whatever, the surrounding targets won't take 100k, they'll take 110. 100% tested, definitely as designed and definitely nuts. Take advantage of these passives as soon as you can and you won't be disappointed. So also when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff ability, you restore 3600 Magicka. There is a bonus to having an eye staff of course, but we're not using an eye staff so that's irrelevant. Uh, light armor, we are using five of these pieces, but you don't have to. There are variants to this which don't negatively impact your setup or your resource management. But you can read through these in your own time. What you do with this is up to you. Obviously, we're going to go to the gear in a moment, but these do give you benefits. Effectiveness versus snares, sprint reduction to cost, magicka recovery, reduction to cost for magicka skills, which is actually not that important because our resource management is disgusting. This does increase your crit chance and, of course, your penetration penetration bonuses are important we've gone five light and two medium but there is a variation to this where you can actually go two medium uh, sorry two light and five medium now you might argue that that basically makes it a stand build and you won't have the resources or reduction to cost to manage your magical bar well you would be wrong instead you trade off penetration for weapon and spell damage and you still end up uh doing very very well but you have more survival because your resistances plus these passives as you can see increased critical damage uh, recovery, reduction to cost of stam skills, 
better sneak radius and all that kind of stuff, increase in weapon and spell damage, and of course movement speed and dodge roll reduction to cost. So there's going to be a couple of different variations to this build that will flip which passives you have, but still be equally effective depending on how you preference to play. But either way, max out these two and you'll be in a good place. Fighters Guild is very important. We are using, of course, Beast Trap. Get Intimidating Presence to get the, the cost down. While it's on your bar, you'll get an extra 3% weapon and spell damage. And while Dawnbreaker is on your bar, you'll get an extra 3% weapon and spell damage. If you kill stuff while on the bar with your Fighters Guild abilities, you will, of course, get 3 ultimate per kill. Bear in mind, we've got 6% weapon and spell damage from the Sorcerer abilities, abilities and we've got 6% from the Fighters Guild. So we've got a 12% bonus on the front bar. Also... Your Fighters Guild's abilities deal more damage with this bonus, especially against players, vampires, and werewolves. Player vampires and werewolves, if you use it in PvP. But again, it still does 10% damage full stop. So get this as soon as you can. Uh, Mage's Guild, this is important. If you have Empower in your group all the time anyway, you know to change Scolden Rune to Liquid Lightning or Lightning Flood. And you also know that uh, unless you're using this, none of this is going to be irrelevant. None of this can be relevant at all, but this reduces the magicka and health cost of your abilities. Quite nice. This increases the duration. Quite nice also. This increases your maximum magicka and recovery for each skill of this type on your bar. Also handy. However, this is what you need. Casting a Mage's Guild ability will grant you Empower, increasing your damage of your heavy attacks against monsters by 80% for 10 seconds. This here is a major skill ability. We were going to use it every single rotation, regardless of its duration. So we can take the initial pop and, of course, keep its uptime. And by doing so, we will be built in always using Empower. Without the need for Elegant, before anyone tries it, and without the need to drastically alter anything that we're doing. If you don't have Major Skill 10, you won't have this. You can get it a little bit earlier, but you need to max it out. If you have Empower in your group already, then you don't necessarily need it. But this skill alone, every rotation, will cover this, allowing for your heavy attacks to be drastically improved. So, a few more passives. We are using two types of armor, so we get a 4% bonus across the board. You get 2% uh, per type, so we've got light and medium. This here, which I was in the wrong order almost, um, take every synergy you can see. You'll get 4% resources back, plus a heal, and yes, that can crit. Now, we are, of course, a high elf. Yes, of course, I know. Some people don't want to be. Um, you don't have to be. You can be whatever you want. Pick a race that you prefer. However, the benefits that we have from the high elf are if you activate an ability, um, you will restore 6 to 5 magicka or stamina based on whichever is lowest. So if you use a magicka skill and the stamina bar is lower, you'll get stamina back. That's really handy. It happens once every 6 seconds. We will take advantage of that. Also, when using an ability that has a channel or cast time, you take 5% less damage. Yes, that includes our heavy attack. So while heavy in, you are tankier. Uh, increases your max magic by 2k, highest bonus in the game. And increases your weapon and spell damage by 258. Also the highest one in the game, but there are three races that have that. So the race choice is yours, but those are the benefits we get. Resource management for our CC bar and flat bonuses across. Alchemy, of course, get medicinal use. Your potions will last 30% longer, which means your cooldown and your uptime will almost match, which means there's never going to be a downtime on your pots. Use them 100% of the time to keep your resources up. You will get benefits from the recovery bonus, not just the burst the potion gives you. If you use a potion while you are almost empty, you're using it wrong. Never let your potions run out. They are consumable buffs. Now the fun part, the gear. If, I've got to put this out there, if you are using the previous version of the Easy Sork, when I say previous, I mean any previous. If you're using the Budgie, if you're using the Mines, if you're using Undaunted Infiltrator and Infallible Aether, whatever you were using before is still fine. But if you want to optimize it and make it as powerful as it is designed to be now in this update, then you want to be using this. So, first of all, <laughs> this is from Wayrest two, uh, 1 and 2. It's from a very simple dungeon. You can go on normal. Lightning Staff of the Sergeant. Now, I can hear it. That's a heavy set. Yes, I know. That's why we're using the jewelry. Three Bloodthirsty to line up with our Sork passives, where we negatively impact our damage the longer the fight goes on. Well, this will push it back up again and make our execute hit harder, uh, as well as our 
standard damage during execute as well. The lower we go into the fight, the less damage our passives does, but the more we do from this. So three bloodthirsty, spell damage on all three, and of course a lightning staff on the front bar in precise with an increased weapon and spell damage glyph. I know people are going to be screaming in the background going, why don't you put the glyph on the back bar on infused? Well, that was tested and you lost 7k DPS. It was more effective here because it allowed for the burst situations rather than making a really, really low glyph not fire very often. This will give you max health, health recovery, so both survival bonuses, and weapon and spell damage, so a bit of damage. But when you deal damage with a heavy attack, you gain a stack of Sergeant's Focus for 5 seconds, increasing the heavy attack damage that you do by 6, 4, 5 per stack. So that stacks up to 4 times. And if you keep reapplying your heavy attacks, this will be maintained. It can stay with you forever. But how long you spend on your back bar is up to you. If you're on the back bar too long, then obviously this will fall off. So the trick is to put your two dots down and whatever buffs you need and then get back nice and quick. Or you can swap back, apply a skill, swap back heavy, swap back, apply a skill, swap back heavy. That's up to you. Make it as complicated as you want. But basically while on your front bar, this is going to be very, very powerful. On the dummy alone, yes, it's a very rigged scenario and doesn't have all the stuff we need, but it also has some of the stuff we don't always have. The dummy, you're looking at 117k heavy attacks. I've seen in excess of 130 in splash, but that hits incredibly hard. This also stacks alongside of Infallible Aether. This gives you 900 towards your heavy attacks if they're fully charged heavies. This one, even if you do half a heavy, it'll start winding it up, but it will give the damage bonus to it all. This massively improves the pop at the end. It's very, very strong. So technically, overall, the average ticks on the dummy for heavy attacks, you're looking somewhere between 40 and 70k for the ticks, but the pops go anywhere between sort of 70 to 120 almost. It's bonkers. This has crit chance, minus layer, weapon and spell damage, and crit chance again. So nice crit bonuses, nice flat damage bonuses, and also both combined dramatically enhance our heavy attacks alongside of Empower, alongside of our flat stats, and in alongside of off balance. We are using Zahn for the crit chance bonus and because it hits really, really hard, but you don't have to. If you want to make this nice and simple, go into Banish Cells 2, pick up more of Inferno. We've got the Jeff helmet there where Jeff will jump out and set everyone on fire. Very powerful, not much in it compared to this, but the choice is yours. The trick to this is how you set up your weights. So you want the whole Aoife set on the body because that's all light. You want Sergeant on the jewelry and the weapon because it's heavy and now we don't have a negative effect. And you want the monster set to be both in medium. Now, if you want to alter this for about 2 or 3k extra DPS, you will drop in heavy attack damage, but you will enhance your single target damage. So this is a choice. If you choose to, you can actually go with Reliquent. Now, you don't need the perfected version because the stamina bonus isn't going to actually introduce any extra damage to your build because you're specced off of spell damage and magicka but it will give you the extra pull if you want to. Get on normal, crit chance, minus slayer, crit chance, just like ether without the spell damage bonus. But because you're heavy attacking all the time, it's really, really easy to maintain the wind up time. In fact, you'll probably have an easier time maintaining this than any light attack weaver because the light attack weavers have to move in and out of combat and make sure they still maintain the light attacks within five seconds of the previous one while dodging in and out of stupid. Whereas you really just have to hold heavy attack and it'll never run out. So Reliquin is an option. There's one more option. For those of you that like off-balance Templar, you know what this set does already. This will take damage over time uh, to proc the set, which means the targets caught in damage over time or taking damage over time will have a stack on them every one tick. And when it goes to 20, it will go boom. And this can affect multiple targets with a two-second cooldown per target. The more targets, the more dramatic it is. But the heavy attack ticks count as damage over time. So the single target that receives the heavy attack from this will escalate. It will pop faster. Also, the ground AoE damage over time that you have running as well, they all count, and you can basically blow up rooms even quicker than you could before. Bear in mind, again, your single target will be less unless there's loads of adds. You won't do as much damage as you would with Infallible Aoife, but you will blow up adds very fast. So that is also an option. Now just bear in mind again, if you do take Reliquin or Reserve Blight instead of Aether, you are going to need to swap around your set weights because they're going to all be medium. You'll want to make sure that you maintain two light bonuses so that you can 
benefit from the penetration bonuses from the light armor passives. So in that case, if you do go with the medium, make sure that your helmet and shoulders are light. You can also go with a Lambris, Grofdar, whatever you like. Back bar weapon is, of course, the Maelstrom weapon. This did get altered. It's no longer skill heavy because before you had to make sure that you light weaved or heavy weaved while the enemy was inside of the wall. So there was a there was a learn to play element there. Now you basically just drop it on the ground and your wall of elements does more damage. Simple as that. Cast it. Done. Now you don't need the perfected version because it only gives you a penetration bonus on the back bar. So go on to normal. So normal way rest, normal Maelstrom, normal Craglawn trials or normal Lair of Marcelock, or normal uh, Cloud Rest. Vet will be required for the Monster Mask, whichever you choose, none are a problem, um, so that's up to you. The only Vet content you need to do is a dungeon in order to get one helmet. Zahn, Jeff, Alambris, Grofdar, whatever your preference. So very simple to set up. Champion points, very easy to understand. These light or white passive bonuses are for everyone. Doesn't matter what your build is, they will stay with you. But unlock this with 10 points in order to get this. So then you can max this out at your own time, but you want to put this one in. This will increase your weapon and spell damage. In the meantime, you can take advantage of um, Backstabber or Fight and Finesse if you are behind the target. Um, obviously, Backstab is going to benefit you, but if you're not, then you want Fight and Finesse instead. You can go with Thermoturge, but it's not really a game changer overall you want to take advantage of the crit damage so then your heavies do more so rifle strikes fight and finesse unless you're behind the target in which case swap it for backstabber so two slottables there to get nice and early on unlock this and fill it in your own time but what we're really after here is 10 points into here so then you can unlock this weapons expert will increase your lights and heavies by 20 percent. that is massive on top of everything else that i've already mentioned and then you want this deadly aim that will increase your single target damage so your heavy attack will hit harder therefore your splash damage will be harder and then you can crit harder with this and then you can add that with this for more heavy attack that you see where i'm going with this flat increase crit increase heavy attack increase technically alongside a further heavy attack increase it's nuts stack them all you're done yes i tried everything else yes we had lots of different combinations and everything that you could think of this was the strongest uh, variation of them all based on this setup. Except, of course, for Backstab Ruby behind the target. Remember, get the passives in your own time. You want to aim for the four slot balls as soon as possible. This is a little different. These are the same. No prerequisites required. Grab that, that, and that. Recovery, armor, and bonus vitality so you've got the extra health. Now, you want to come down to here. 15 points in there. Fill it up if you've got enough points. 10 points in here and that will unlock your next health bonus again 10 points in for the health if you want or max it out then you've got a choice siphon and spells if you want the magic back or bloody renewal if you want the stamina back why did i say that well we're not going to run out of magicka when i show you the rotation you'll see why so we could take advantage of this instead and just keep filling our stamina bar so we can basically act like a medium build dodging and weaving and jumping and running um but still perform like a magical build. So you've got the best of both worlds. Or if you really feel like your recovery is hot shit right now, you can dump this all together and just take both. So on most builds, I build for magic, have this. Build for stam, have this. This particular build is not going to run out of any resources apart from stamina if you dodge roll too much. So stack them both and you're all good. Um, again, Pick up the yellow or white passives in your own time. Fill them all up. But the slottables are what you want to go for first. Green tree doesn't make a shit's bit of difference. Obviously, you want to go up towards this. So you've got your enchant bonuses. But the four slottables I would recommend for everyday use is this one, which will give you higher quality loot from chests if you want. Uh, this one will increase your speed in situations where you're not actually in combat. So you can go from one to another really, really fast. Then you've got this, which will improve the duration of your food. And then you've got this, which will give you a chance to not even use a potion, even though you'll still get the benefits from it. Does it make or break the game if you use those four sortables or don't? No, not at all. These are quality of life. They don't necessarily directly help your performance or alter your performance in content. Just cheaper on resources, a bit quicker between fights, and better quality loot. None of them actually make you hit harder or survive more. Now, rotation. <laughs> get ready for this complicated bit of stuff maintain this buff that is your crit surge maintain it at all times 
If you think you're really hard and you can live without heals, then of course you can inner light both bars and you never have to press that button. But bear in mind, your survival will be nuked. Hope you trust your healer. In the meantime, maintain this on the front bar. Now, usually I put this into the rotation and tell you exactly when you should press it, exactly the right time, etc, etc, etc. I'm not going to tell you to do that. I'm going to tell you to keep it nice and simple. Options. Combat. Ability timers. On. Back bar. On. Ability item bars or attribute bars, whatever. All this kind of stuff is up to you. But these two need to be on. Have that automatic or always showing. Why? Because if I can see my bars and I activate this, look at the timer on my skill. And even if I swap bars, I can still see the yellow bar above it. Look at my skills. I can see how long is left. All I expect you to do with that skill is let it last as long as you possibly can because the lower end of it, when it's about to run out, is stronger. And when it runs out or is about to run out, squeeze it in and reapply it. That's it. And on this bar, Every 30 seconds, reapply that. You don't have to spam them. You don't have to keep overusing them. Just when they run out, if your timer is gone or the skill has run out, reapply it. In the meantime, all you need to do is this. So you put your rune down first, then your wall down afterwards. Or vice versa. It's up to you. Once that's done, you heavy attack three times. And then, Beast Trap Swap. Reapply. Heavy Attack three times. Beast Trap Swap. Light, Rune, Light, Wall, Swap. Heavy three times. Beast Trap Swap. In between that, maintain this. And maintain this. That is literally it. Obviously, you want to take advantage of your ultimate as much as possible. But if you do that you will destroy rooms and you will be very successful on single target bosses as well. There's nothing that the game in the game that this build can't do and that never has been an issue. But now it is literally back to basics and as simple as it ever was in its first edition of it. But now it just hits harder. If you look at a flat damage numbers, no, we're not hitting 150,000 um, per second. Not a chance. However, single target if you can maintain your very simple rotation, but actually make sure the timing is correct um, and not hang around too long, not pressing buttons, you can get in excess of somewhere between 86 and 90k single target. Bear in mind, it's designed to be a very simple build. And you've got all your survival intact. However, when it comes to multiple targets being in the room, you can do in AoE stupid amounts of damage from your heavy attack and still successful amount or reasonable amount of damage from your skills so whatever you hit the main target for most people's aoe will be sort of 10 to 15 maybe even 20 percent of of that you will actually hit the surrounding targets on average around sort of the 60 to 70 percent of the damage you're doing to that one it varies depending on the content. It varies depending on the buffs and bonuses required or supplied by the group. But you can do at least 60 to 70% of the same amount of damage to surrounding targets as you can the one that you're hitting. These are not buffed at all. None of them have debuffs, bonuses, nothing. So I don't have minor breach. I don't have major breach. I don't have berserk, um, major slayer, none of that stuff. But this will give you a rough example of what to look for. That, that. And then heavy. And that's it. And maintain your resistance buff. Your AoE is disgusting. And that is without any buffs whatsoever. All you have to do is just keep doing that. Heavy. Heavy. Heavy beast trap swap. And that's it. Of course, if you've got an ultimate, you fire it. The more targets, the better. And that's it. That's all you have to do. But if we go up against this dude over here... You'll be able to see just how hard the heavy attacks are hitting. Obviously, this is not a big dummy hump. I'm just going to show you what the heavy does. So, make sure you do this. The pop at the end of that was quite nice. And just maintain it. Heavy. Pop. Heavy. 
pop. Heavy. And then off balance is coming in just a moment. Three, two, one. Big off balance heavy attack. 104k. That's it. Disgusting. The surrounding targets will get hit for harder uh, or higher numbers than your initial target. So your splash damage is really, really large. Now, we're going to give one quick demonstration of why you might want to go with Zerb Light in some of your groups. Although the heavy attack variation of this build or the heavy attack promoting version of this build, obviously this and this, um, are extremely powerful, you might want to try this out. And then we're going to look at fashion because I don't want to extend this video too much. Come on! So we'll put this on. Make sure you put magic glyphs on everything, by the way. Same stuff all the way through. Magic glyphs on all your gear. Change this to uh, light for these two. So now we've flipped our passives, which still gives us really nice stats. Check this out. Uh, do we have an ultimate? Probably not. If you've played off-balance Templar before, you know exactly what's coming. If you haven't, um, you might not need to. Pay close attention to what's going on here. Big booms. There's a million damage in AOA there. Also, we're using a lightning staff so we can supply off balance uh, a lot. Yep, that works in content as designed. And these are six million dummies, by the way, not threes. So it took a little bit longer to kill, but you can. Effectively, you can kill a six million... Uh, you can kill 26 millions quicker than someone can kill one. In content, that does reflect that. Obviously, you want to make sure your tank is very, very aware that they should be stacking stuff. And no, not every situation is going to have that many dummies or that many targets. But it's still effective. So the choice is yours. Zerb Light, Reliquin, or the original heavy attack version. It's up to you. Fashion. Now we want to see what we're wearing, obviously, after that finally wears off. We have changed it up a little bit. We have gone back to basics and added some new stuff as well. So we are using the Monarchina style hat, obviously. We are using the Annihilax Chosen Jack. We are using the Annihilax Chosen Pauldron, so the heavy. Dramaphora gloves, which are light. Dramaphora girdle, so that's uh, medium. No, it's heavy. Heavy one, my bad. Trinimac breeches, light. And of course, Dramaphora shoes, also in light. The staff... Look at that. Very nice. That is Spellscar Litharam's Staff. Whatever that is. Uh, that's a special one. And also Abnathan's on the back. So the colors we're using is literally just black on everything. So whichever black you've got available, go nuts. Technically speaking, it's Legate's black, but use whatever you preference. So hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully you now have an understanding of how to approach this particular build. And hopefully if you're an old school uh, viewer, you've been watching this for a very long time. This is a refreshing look on the easy sort, putting it back to where it belongs. Anyway, people, thank you for watching. I huge appreciate it. If you are not subscribing, obviously hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the website zonogaming.com. And don't forget the outplayed link at the bottom there. If you're playing other games, if you're streaming stuff, or you just want to keep on on uh, tabs with your kill streaks and stuff in other games, then of course, take advantage of that app. It's absolutely banging. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.